Welcome to Small Night Scene. Today I'm going to read from a text entitled On the Assertive Artist. The text is really a critique on the scene itself uh, or the institutionalization of the scene, the professionalization of the scene and how artists have to become uh, particular pawns uh, in that network. Uh, and they have become, in a sense, self-effacing or perhaps unassertive pawns. Um, uh, the shifting of power uh, to curators, uh, gallerists, directors, uh, not so much our critics because they're all just they've all disappeared, but really, the shifting of power is something I'm interested in, and how the language uh, being used in press releases, uh, in artist statements, uh, in interviews, uh, in, every, in, in all the literature that surrounds art, all that institutionalized literature that surrounds art, is quite passive. Um, so this text looks at the memoir in particular uh, and references Maggie Nelson's The Argonauts, um, Jean Bertrand's Pantalises, um, the Love of Beginnings and um, Roland Barthes whom uh, Maggie Nelson references a lot in The Argonauts. Um, I screen printed in blue which I'm quite excited about. It's full blue. Uh, I had been screen printing up to this point in black. Um, this one has a lovely deep uh, blue colour to it um, and on the front cover we have Maggie Nelson from 1999 uh, when she was a poet in particular, before she really tackled prose, a uh, very interesting poet. Um, so this was kind of a, an image I found online in, in the back of the internet somewhere. Um, uh, in the inside cover, you have an image of uh, Andy Warhol's car crash screen prints. Um, so it's a print of that, it's a bitmap again. And uh, it turned out really well, especially in the blue. I tried it in black and it didn't resonate the same way. Um, the text itself came out really well, probably one of my better ones, very clear. Um, I seem to be coming a little bit more proficient in, in getting the text to um, come out on paper uh, or to be exposed at a certain, uh, the right amount of time. Um, so there's lots of lovely little um, uh, grammar and punctuation being picked up in this. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit heavy, which I like. Uh, it gives a sense, uh, a certain presence to the text. Um, but uh, on the back we have Maggie and Roland uh, in their initials, uh, their first name initials. The text also talk, talks about autobiography because I am referenced memoir uh, and my autobiography. So I pushed uh, elements of my autobiography into the text. I wanted to risk uh, privacy, um, some things that um, happened to me uh, earlier on in my childhood and um, I wanted to see where language could take me and what could I say in the written word. This whole project is about that, is about that um, the differences between spoken word and written word um, and how uh, we can find a middle ground between those two things. Um, I'm trying to figure out uh, through this process uh, when I speak uh, my words uh, from uh, the written example, um, how do they turn out, does it change, am I um, forced or compelled to change the written word when I'm speaking it. And I am finding that, I'm finding that some sentences that are written, uh, that uh, they could be good sentences, but when I speak them, they don't uh, feel right. So I have to change them in the spoken word. So these are all things that I'm discovering through this process. Um, the text is also really um, a look at language, uh, especially how Roland Barthes uh, looks at language. And he says something really interesting here. And I'm going to read this out, of course, in, in the reading. But I, I want to kind of reiterate it here because it's really important and it's something I think that some writers do, like Maggie Nelson. There's an assertiveness in Maggie, Maggie Nelson's language 
in her revelations, uh, autobiographical revelations, that is profound. Um, sometimes you feel she's going too far uh, in relation to uh, her relationships, uh, her family, her friends. How much can you re reveal? You can reveal as much as you want of yourself, but of other people who are related to, to you uh, in that kind of you know, contact, that you know, in intimate contact. Um, so this is a, <clears throat> a fragment from uh, the fragmented the Argonauts. Um, I'll just read it out here. Afraid of assertion, always trying to get out of totalizing language, i.e. language that rides roughshod over specificity, realizing this is another form of paranoia. Bart found the exit of this merry-go-round by reminding himself that, quote, it is language that is assertive, not he, end quote. It is absurd, Bart says, to try to flee from language's assertive nature by adding to each sentence some little phrase of uncertainty, as if anything that came out of language could make language tremble, end quote. In terms of our criticism, um, I've worked with editors before uh, whom have found my writing quite assertive in its opinion. Um, and at times I've tamed it by using uh, perhaps or maybe. Uh, and that sometimes you know, helps out in the relationship between uh, our critic, our writer and editor. But there's something wrong or something, uh, something uh, false about perhaps or maybe. Um, at times in my writing career, uh, I've used it too much to kind of soften the blow of criticism. It's a text that lies, you know, outside of my reviews. Um, some of the texts I'll be delivering here are not reviews per se, but they are directed and targeted to our art scene. So without further ado, let's do this. Thank you. I love real artists. I love how they assert themselves very early on to dream and then brave the economic and psychological voids and shadows of forever becoming an artist. I love how, undeterred by cruel obstacles and responses to that dream, they continue on in education, in life, in love, in family, in frustration, in rage, and are unfurling to a defenseless openness where senses and memories, stares and cultures leave them petalous to assaults that wound and scar from the inside out. Not unlike the closet of sexuality, with the addition of an ironical winking light bulb, artists come out in their assertion of life, of a life, as something to be lived, not denied. The real artist's destructive capacity equals that of the workaday accumulation of everyone else. And that, if you think about it, in terms of numbers of artists versus everyone else, is superhuman destructive. I came out as an artist, that is, came out of childhood finding myself clinging on to the artistic affirmation I received as a child from friends and family, to find myself stranded between the naive dream of being an artist and the workaday reality that my father represented to me as a coal miner, a forester, a security guard, followed by his forced early retirement due to a DUI that ploughed grill first into his unfurled car and body at five to six, five minutes from home. From that dinner time on, that GBH borrowed holes in the workaday ethic of my father. Cats have nine lives, but don't live on with eight traumas. Humans carry on would carry on. For the last week I've been reading three memoirs. Jean Bertrand's Pantalis' Love of Beginnings, Maggie Nelson's The Argonauts, and Roland Barthes by Roland Barthes. The difference between eyes meeting across a crowded bar and eyes meeting on the written page is the lack of performativity and the psychic excess in the latter. Here I am riding passenger to these drivers in boxer shorts and t-shirt in bed beside my wife. 
the word gets all access to the private you. Sometimes the reading experience is known for a blue convertible and grey destination. Sometimes it's a tank in the close heat. Sometimes it's a couple in an argument demanding to pull over and exit and perform the slamming door, the last word. Sometimes it's just a book, boxer shorts and t-shirt. Reading you, Jeanne and Maggie, my mother's name, which I've learned to repeat here with pleasure, and Roland, I am the most unflinching and attentive and assertive me without being conscious of the fact. Reading like Proust wrote and is read, coldly tends to life and intimately denies it. Last night in my boxer shorts, it was Maggie Nelson's turn. I came across this passage, this fragment, in Bart's terminology, where Bart is referenced in one of those embedded quotations of Maggie's, wherein she somehow manages to ventriloquize with a megaphone while still keeping her voice after their invocation. The Argonauts is a novel, a memoir, an essay spilling out on the page when Maggie's families are not looking, but Maggie is, wielding assertive language behind her back with a gaping hole in her chest. Here she writes and thinks and shares if her parents will never read it, even though in so many words they wrote it, or at the very least, proffered the experiences to activate the white spaces between Maggie's words. Here Maggie is breaking the rules laid down by her parents and all the other mothers and fathers we appoint and anoint over a lifetime. Here Maggie is putting her body on the line en route to putting her relationship, family, privacy and other writers on the line. Her quotation dropping is not a case of look what I've read, but look how I've read you, them, me. The fragment goes like this. Afraid of assertion, always trying to get out of totalizing language, i.e. language that rides roughshod over specificity. Realizing this is another form of paranoia, Bart found the exit of this merry-go-round by reminding himself that it is language that is assertive, not he. It is absurd, Bart says, to try to flee from language's assertive nature by adding to each sentence some little phrase of uncertainty, as if anything that came out of language could make language tremble. Reading this fragment, I started to think about the unassertive languages of the art scene, not just the press releases and art writing, but the body language of the artist as she, he retreats back to the closet where the light bulb is full of want, not need, need being the ingredient for action. I realize what I'm missing when reading Maggie. Her invocation of Bart is not a theory extinguished in some ideology of want to leave the gray plume of the poetic. She is not fleeing languages, assertive nature. She is letting language fall through her in her contracted and bold prose that without arrogance or closet-sightedness, that's in the world. To be assertive, but not too assertive, the artist finds herself in an environment lacking in resources, just the bare minimum. And that's okay. To want more is to need less, act less. Questions at professional skills seminars go a little like this. Should I contact a curator? What should I say? How long should I give them to respond? Should I attach my CV? Should I ask them to meet for a coffee, dinner, dessert, and so on? As I read Maggie, I notice no perhaps or maybes. No apologies for thinking or opining or repurposing in a certain way. Maggie opens with the exclamatory joy of anal sex, an anticipatory pleasure of dildos in the shower. This is not to say her prose is arrogant, vulgar. There is vulnerability here in the boldness, wounded and not the castrated wounded woman, 
what my son at four years after catching my wife naked in the shower severed with you have no willy poor you the male ego is not assertive it is established by the external riptide that carries it along without the choice of getting drowned in it poor him maggie's ego is a wounded one whether that wound is inflicted by society or her mother who knows but maggie but woman for whom putting her body on the line is nature, not nurture. Quote, I nodded, shyly lifting my breasts out of my bra. In one stunning gesture, she took my breasts into her hand beak and clamped down hard. A bloom of custard colored drops rose in a ring, indifferent to my doubts. End quote. Just now, I received an email from Mother's Tank Station Limited, Dublin. My feelings about it are fizzing, so I thought this is the best time to be assertive in my feelings about what I think an assertive verbal gesture on the part of Mother's writer that, in this current press release for the solo exhibition, Jesse Homer French Paintings, 1978 to 2018, comes part way out of the closet with the light bulb winking again. Quote, the Dublin Gallery of Mother's Tank Station has a sort of hallway or cuboid antechamber from which one enters directly from Watland Street, positioned pretty immediately below the desk from where most of these writings magically appear. End quote. Alchemy, assertive, assertive alchemy. I've always enjoyed Mother's press releases, even if I thought I didn't like a lot of people, in the very act of reading them, sometimes rereading them. They create consternation and are always assertive in their support for their artists, wielding a manifesto that was rewritten recently, but in its first edition proclaimed what mothers did not mean, which psychoanalytically probably meant just that, or that and more. As the weight and likeness of images topple the physical art scene online, Mother's assertive verbosity gives me hope that I am in the right game, writing for art. That writing, that language, can be assertive where artists cannot, and it shouldn't be tamed because, as Bart reminds us and Maggie performs, language doesn't tremble, we do. Thank you.